Max and Stacy, and uh, you guys were inspirational to uh, the creation of Simply Bitcoin. Uh, and I'll say, I just told Stacy, but I'll tell Max, I copied the Kaiser Report format, and uh, that was uh, very, very inspirational for you guys. And you and Andreas, uh, you guys and Andreas were were who Orange built me. Uh, so you guys work at the Kaiser Report. So I actually just. Um, Met, uh, we had a swan salon. I had an interview with Damian Merlo. He spoke super highly of you guys. Could you guys give a, an update? What is what is happening in the on the shining country on the hill? Uh, El Sa the savior, El Salvador. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it's it's the update is that it's growing by leaps and bounds, and it's going from strength to strength, and it's um, happening during a time when these fiat money countries are collapsing they're falling apart so the timing is exquisite because you have the president uh, Bukele who's the right guy at the right time in the right country with the right currency the right money Bitcoin in a world that is just dying from a 300 year experiment with fiat money that it, it didn't work El Salvador is winning El Salvador is winning hello where's my audio <laughs> no, um, no. So that's that's the update. El Salvador is winning, and it's important that El Salvador keeps winning. You know, everybody here at this conference, so many people have stopped me and said El Salvador has to win, and it really has to. Of course. I mean, it's going to prove the model that you know. And and, and I actually want to add to that, and I want to get you guys' take because I had a conversation with Jimmy about this earlier. I don't think that it's a coincidence that the first society which fixed the base layer, right, the base layer, which, you know, the base layer of society, put it on a sound money standard. I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, the politician who got elected, I'm talking about Naim Bukele, is actually doing the job that he's elected to do. And I think that as long as countries have fiat money, politicians are not incentivized to actually do good by their constituents. They're incentivized to get as close as humanly possible to the money printer. So El Salvador is the beach, that's the beachhead. It is, it is, it's integral. It's integral that El Salvador keeps doing what it's doing because it's gonna prove to all the countries around that, that there's an alternative to the US dollar. There's an alternative to the IMF. And that's exactly what Naim Bukele is doing. Yeah, you know, fiat money is uh, breeds corruption, and it's all proof of stake, isn't it? The U.S. dollar is proof of stake. If you have a lot of it, you get to make the laws to make it easier to get more of it, and it just creates a very corrupt society. With Bitcoin, you don't have that, and you have a virtuous uh, government who is really working hard to get rid of the violence and working hard now with a new initiative as of a couple of months ago to go after all white collar crimes and white collar crooks. So the president is not going after the, the elites and uh, doing a great job in reimbursing the citizens of all the money that was stolen with the previous administrations over the past 20, 30 years. Yeah, I said it on stage and I'll say it again here, uh, Frederick Bastiat, the French statesman, and I would say President Bukele is a statesman. There aren't very many of them in history, but uh, Frederick Bastiat in his pamphlet called The Law, he wrote, when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that justifies it and a moral code that glorifies it. So the United States, after all these years, since 1971 especially, of having this all fiat standard, which is an all plunder standard, they glorify plunder. And you see that everywhere glorifies plunder to the point of like, yeah, like let's don't call those people looters who go into the CVS and rob it blind. Like these are just <laughs> liberator, whatever they, they glorify these people in a way. So it makes sense that that would happen under a fiat standard. And it makes sense that the opposite, that the plunder would end that because plunder is no longer a way of life for a group of men in the society of El Salvador. So you have the opposite. The legal system no longer justifies it. You had 40 years of plunder there from the politicians and from the gangs. 
So the, ju the legal system no longer tolerates those people, and the moral code no longer glorifies it. And, and you think that has to... So I, I, you know, Opti and I, we've been talking about this for weeks now. We, we really believe that Bitcoin has something to do with this. Uh, Max, what's your take on that? Absolutely. You know, Bitcoin, the president was attracted to Bitcoin years ago, starting back in 2017 or so. He was tweeting about it. And of course, he made it legal tender. And it, uh, you know, you, uh, Bitcoin changes you, you don't change Bitcoin. So it has this ability to elevate everybody's consciousness and moral standing to the level of the protocol, which is perfect, perfect money. And of course, it uh, permeates throughout the society and everybody on the street feels it, even though the adoption of Bitcoin rate in El Salvador, actual people using it might be, you know, 10, 15%. The awareness of it is 100%. And the awareness of Bitcoin is just as equally important as using Bitcoin in terms of the ethos of Bitcoin and the philosophy of Bitcoin. And so you see that throughout the country. Absolutely. Wait, I'd like to ask uh, Max and Stacey. I was in El Salvador, I think it was uh, last year around August. What's the improvement and like how, how, how far has El Salvador come in its last year and a half or so uh, since they've been on the Bitcoin standard, since Bukele has been a revolutionary and really ex not only exposing Bitcoin to the world, but obviously just improving the country. And, it, and I think it's undeniable at this point. Well, I, there are two kind of answers to that one is bitcoin and one is just um the character and the strength of president bukele to stick with his war against the gangs so the war against the gangs yeah i mean it, maybe it's a bit to do with bitcoin but really it's him it's his uh character and it's his determination as a leader so that was really important and since August of last year, you've had, you know, weeks on end without a single homicide in the country. And for, you know, we weren't, you know, we're not Salvadoran. Like, we didn't grow up there. We didn't, but we know so many people who were captives. They were prisoners in their own homes for their whole lives. Uh, you know, this young guy, Mario, who we work with, and he's like 26. He works with me in the Bitcoin office, and he helped with Kubo Plus. He, you know, when he talks about his liberation, that he wasn't free to leave the house after, you know, 7 p.m. when it's dark and closer to the equator. You know, he, he couldn't leave the house. He wasn't free to leave. And now the world is like his oyster. He can go wherever he wants. And then there is the Bitcoin side. And yes, Bitcoin is now like it has, it has helped along with that. There, there are two sets of optimism and they're like converging into like this overwhelming optimism and, and in a sense that all is possible. Whatever you want to do, you can do. And you feel that. And Bitcoin is part of that. And the, the liberation of the people from the gangs. And, and as a lot of American and Opti as well, um, it is inspiring. I live in Miami, okay? And Miami is the... It, it, my, it is like part of Latin America, it, it, Miami. It, it, it is, but it, and it, it, to my point, it, it, if you reach Miami as a lot in America, you, you've reached the promised land. I've heard people in Miami, El Salvadorian, saying, I want to go back. That is unheard of. You don't hear that, which is absolutely insane. But before I get to that, I actually want to pull up this, uh, this article um, by, uh, by Bloomberg. And it is a big I told you so moment by the president. Um, and I think he said, you know, I don't want to say I told you so. I, I, I can't believe this. Uh, th this is not my word. This is Bloomberg. It says El Salvador President Naim Bukele scared off Wall Street by embracing Bitcoin. Two years later, the bond rally he's overseeing is proving too lucrative to resist. And if you read the article itself, it's saying that it's the most uh, successful bond in the region so what are your guys takes on that right well the um that's what he said he was going to do he was going to improve the credit worthiness of the country and by getting rid of the violence you've got an entrepreneurial renaissance and boom uh, you've got a lot of foreign direct investment tourism is up 100 percent. so this is a great bond and the bonds are up 70 80 percent year on year 
and um, we've always thought that we could help the country become debt-free by 2030, effectively debt-free by 2030, and to be able to issue the IMF, which is an important goal, to be able to be free of international bankers, and that's just another whole state of freedom. Also, when I talk about statesmen or a great leader, that is one of the most uh, important qualities of a great leader, is to be unflinching in his resolve. And his resolve is unflinching. He is determined. And he saw the path, and he knew where he wanted to go. He, you know, that's actually the, the phrase that first got me and Max to El Salvador. He said, where El Salvador is going is to the place we want to be. So that's a leader leading his people, right? A leader is supposed to persuade through or great oratory ability, but they have to be unflinching. They have to be, they have to be able to, that's the hardest part to have because you, you have to have real strength of character to withstand that pressure, to withstand the mocking. And the mocking was relentless. We were there, like the mocking was relentless about Bitcoin. It was about the war against the gangs. Like, and he was just calm as fuck. Like he was just like, he knew where he was going. He knew where El Salvador was going and that it was the place he wanted to be and that he knew the people would want to be. And sure enough, that's what you see now. Yeah, and, and, and it, I love how you said it. He said he did exactly what he said he was going to do. And you mentioned the response, and Opti and I, we were covering this, the relentless, I mean relentless attack by the legacy corporate media. Uh, the Economist came out with, if you would search, uh, if you would search El Salvador uh, and you put El Salvador, Economist on Google, right? It would just be else. Uh, Naim Bukele is a dangerous democracy. Uh, Naim Bukele is a dangerous democracy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You search China and The Economist. There was nothing. Just it was either neutral news about China or whatever news about China, right? It was no, nothing was mentioned about the Uyghurs. Nothing was mentioned about the fact that China doesn't even have democracy. And speaking of democracy, Naim Bukele has the highest approval rating in the world, right? So you would think, you know, it, 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 do they really care about democracy or is, it, or is this more so about control? Max? Well, the experiment in El Salvador that's proven to be wildly successful is a threat to the status quo and it's a threat to the fiat money world. And of course, they're gonna be panicking at this point, and you can see the panic in their faces, that what if this becomes a model for the region? What if this becomes a model for the world? What if Bitcoin becomes global reserve standard? What if the fiat money world collapses? And uh, it means that all of those folks are gonna be existentially threatened. And so they're panicking and they're fighting and they are, really just um, throwing all the mud that they possibly can to try to stop this juggernaut. But Bitcoin is on a vector that's unstoppable, really. It's, it's perfect money. It comes from a place of need that's deep and resonates deeply in the human psyche. And at this stage, it, there's no turning back. We as a species are gonna make this Bitcoin singularity happen. Absolutely beautiful. And speaking about it spreading, this this uh, this peaceful revolution spreading, uh, you're already starting to hear this in other countries saying, "Hey, I want to copy this Naim Bukele model." And then, most importantly, I think the <laughs> the breaking news is uh, Javier Mali in Argentina, uh, hardcore uh, Austrian economist. Uh, he and in terms of moving the Overton window. He's saying the quiet part out loud, and he just won the presidential primary by 11 points. And he's saying stuff like inflation is theft. Um, you don't need a central bank. The central bank is the problem. He's a fan of Bitcoin. Um, it, 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 you know, is this part of the, the global rise against the central bankers, Max, that you've been talking about for years now? Definitely. And um, his five minute interview that he gave recently explaining money and Bitcoin and politics was the best I've heard in my 13 years in Bitcoin. And his catchphrase, which I think says it all, is make money private again. In other words, money existed before the state. 
the state ruined money and Bitcoin is going to ruin the state and make money private again. And this will be a hugely beneficial for all people everywhere. Absolutely. But I also want to say it's interesting that he only ever mentions Bitcoin. He has never made, he doesn't say crypto. The same thing with the U.S. candidates for president, whether it's uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. or Vivek I can't say his last name. Right? Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. <laughs> and there's one other candidate. Who is it that's... Uh, uh, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, oh. RFK Jr. Or, or and Suarez. Francis Suarez. Francis yeah. Suarez. Yeah. He is a former shitcoiner. Yeah. <laughs> now he only talks about Bitcoin. You know, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. mentioned crypto in his first tweet. He said crypto. And that was the last time he ever said crypto. He only says Bitcoin now. And that's quite interesting. They you know, politicians understand the zeitgeist and have the pollsters and know what the people actually want. And they know that the word crypto, that is toxic. Crypto is toxic. Bitcoin maximalism is not toxic on a political sphere. I mean, Bitcoin maximalism is, uh, is life. And I, I actually, um, it was the first time I met you guys. It was Bitcoin 2021. Uh, it, I, I was a nobody back then. Uh, it was backstage. I think I scared Max a little bit because I, I just bowed like that, and um, and uh, that's where I said uh, that's where I said uh, the line that went absolutely viral. It scared Eric Voorhees. It was quoted in the Financial Times. I said, "If you're against Bitcoin, uh, and and Max, you you retweeted this, and I said, if you're against Bitcoin toxicity, you're against Bitcoin, and if you're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom." Um, so yes, I, I 100% agree with you. Uh, what, uh, talk to me about Volcano Bonds. What's going on over there? Sure. Well, Volcano Bonds became Volcano Energy, and Volcano Energy is a billion-dollar Bitcoin mining startup in El Salvador, which was uh, tapping into geothermal as well as wind and solar. So the project is up and running, and uh, it's a huge investment. As Stacey mentioned in our talk, it's a billion-dollar investment. That's 3% of GDP. So in one in one go, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more behind it, and uh, the country's got a lot of geothermal to exploit, and we're going to be tapping into it. And uh, we've got a lot of hash rate to hash. We want to become one of the biggest centers of hash in the world, and to geographically diversify hash rate to El Salvador as part of Bitcoin's ever need to become more and more decentralized. And it, of course, also does incentivize. Uh, the building of infrastructure, energy infrastructure, and energy is life, right? So we're, we're building new energy infrastructure, and we encourage others to come do that. Uh, there will be a bond coming uh, probably in 2024. So, well, yeah, next year. So uh, you d we still do have that to look forward to, but the, the way we did it is so it's pure equity play, and it's uh, no debt at all. And that is really important to maintain sovereignty. And El Salvador has sovereignty. Max and Stacy have sovereignty. Volcano Energy has sovereignty. We have no debt, no leverage, zero leverage on Volcano Energy. And next year, we're going to offer some of it as a debt, just a little bit um, and scale up. But people do want to participate. Uh, it might be, you know, so, some sort of way for people to participate in it because we do know people want to they want to be part of the story of el salvador if you can't move there you know we encourage bitcoiners and builders to move to el salvador to come join us there and help build renaissance 2.0 and enlightenment 2.0 but if you can't you know they want a way to participate they just want some chunk of el salvador to say they you know they were part of this revolution Absolutely, 100%. So we got about four minutes, guys, before the next panel. Uh, Nine Bukele, 2024. Bukele, 2024. Max is wearing the hat, and I'm going to read it. Uh, no, it's too far away. Max, do you mind turning your head? Uh, it's a, Translation is God, Union, Liberty, and Bitcoin. Bukele, 2024. Could you guys talk about that election? I mean, you would think that it's going to be a, a blowout. It, it's 90% approval rating. Now, I, I, I forget who. It, I talked to an advisor of, of Bukele, and I, and I brought up the question. 
Um, does it concern you a, a little bit that, you know, the U.S. might get involved <laughs> a little bit? Because, look, there is a there is a there is a bill that got passed in Congress that uh, was exploring. Uh, yeah, that's from. Yeah, some lame. Uh, we don't even want to mention their name, lame uh, Democratic Congress people. But look at what's happening. Just look at the actions, because people love winners. And President Bukele is a winner. And El Salvador is winning. And you see the attitude shifting from, you know, uh, President Biden did appoint a, a, a great ambassador of the United States to El Salvador, Pres uh, Ambassador Duncan. And so he is somebody who has been very positive. He's there was a, a interview with him, a great clip. Like he was saying amazing things about El Salvador because okay. because he's there. He lives in El Salvador. He sees if you see it like. Don't trust verify. Anybody who comes to El Salvador, even if they're a hater, you can't deny what you see. You can't deny the liberation. You can't deny the freedom. You can't deny the optimism. And that is what uh, Ambassador Duncan sees. So he says that, and, and therefore the, the shift in attitude that you see coming out of the Biden administration, you see that with uh, Marco Rubio, you know, Senator Rubio coming to El Salvador. You see that with Ted Cruz has says positive stuff about El Salvador. So be, that is because people like winners and he's not winning for no reason. President Bukele is winning for a reason. And you, you, you want to be the, you want to stand next to the guy who's winning. And that's why the United States is standing next to uh, uh, President Bukele. And I think that, I would imagine they want a winner to continue in office there that, in El Salvador. That is, that is very, very nice to hear, Stacey, and, and thank you for that that uh, that update. Uh, Max, we got about a minute or two left. We got about one minute. Bukele 2024, what, what's your message to everyone watching? Right, well, to follow up what Stacey was saying, the U.S. loves the more and more Bukele in El Salvador because migration patterns are reversing. As you pointed out earlier, there's actually, we're approaching now the moment when more people are going to El Salvador than leaving. And uh, the diaspora that lives in America, three million Salvadorans, we project that half a million are going to be moving back to El Salvador. So they're going to be uh, very few people leaving El Salvador because it's the new land of opportunity. It's the new Camelot. It's what America was back in the 1950s. This is the land where people, the land of the free, home of the Bitcoin. So this is why the popularity is soaring, and this is why the U.S. is all for it, because it, it solves a problem for them on the border. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like we have a little bit more time here. Anyways, um, okay, current projects. What are you guys focusing on? Uh, what are you guys focusing on other than the volcano energy? Anything else? Well, we just wrapped, well, we're almost wrapping on Cuba Plus, which is a, a Bitcoin and Lightning devs program in El Salvador, and that is born out of our Bitcoin embassy, the first ever Bitcoin, official Bitcoin embassy, which is uh, El Salvador's Bitcoin embassy in Lugano. And so we've had uh, Jimmy Song, Lisa Nigat here from Austin. We had Peter Todd. We had Safety Namus. Like we had some of the best and brightest of the Bitcoin world teaching Salvadoran students, the best and brightest of El Salvador how to become Bitcoin and Lightning devs. So they're all getting great jobs right now. They're, they're being uh, you know, flown to Lugano to go uh, meet other people there and more education and Bitcoin. So Kuba Plus was, you know, it's, it's now I think going to be a benchmark against what all other Bitcoin education projects will be measured at the elite level. Peter Todd, who everybody knows is a very early Bitcoin core de uh, dev, he says like this was the best one he's ever participated in. So, you know, we're, we're uh, I seek excellence.